ranking the best to worst putters of all time. Let's get into it. Right guys, here we have it, ranking the best to worst putters of all time. We have some absolute iconic classics, some hidden gems that you guys probably haven't heard of and worth putting in the bag if you're looking for that average price, good performing putter. And then we've got some controversial bad options at the bottom, which I'd love to hear your thoughts on. Again, shout out to Gabe from Let's Play Through for giving me this idea. And seeing as you guys love the driver ranking video, I thought I'd spend some time, do a bit of research and find out some of the best and worst putters of all time. Make sure to leave comments down below if you agree or disagree with my choices. Let's get into it. Okay, let's start from the very top. The most iconic putter of our entire generation. All time great. You wouldn't have a Scotty Cameron. You wouldn't have Yes putters. You wouldn't have Cleveland putters, tailor-made putters. This head design is so perfect in terms of physics and it makes sense because the guy that invented it, Carsten Solheim, in the 1960s in his garage knew what he was doing with his engineering background. And the bit I love most about all of this is that if he didn't suck at putting, he wouldn't have invented this putter to help his putting style. Not only that, we wouldn't even have Ping as a company. The most iconic putter in my eyes, love to hear if you agree or disagree, is the answer putter from Ping. So let's get some of the bad ones out of the way. What were Odyssey thinking with the flip face? It goes against everything when it comes to putting, terminology, thinking, method, keep the same thing constant. Find a putter, of course, that suits you. Length, lie, insert, do you want it soft? Do you want it firm? Don't keep mixing it up every round. And if anything, the putter should be called the placebo and not the flip face. We've got so many good putters here. And to be honest, so many of them need to go into the iconic section, but I need to be ruthless. Let's have a look at a few interesting ones. I'm gonna go and put the Rife putter in the okay section. And the reason I'm putting it in the okay section is because they were one of the first putters to put the groove on the face. Trying to offset that spin that you impart on a ball and try and get really decent roll. And there are tons of good Rife putters out there. And like all my suggestions, some of you are gonna have Rife putters, some of you have Odyssey, some of you are gonna have the Knight putters, and you're gonna be putting beautifully with them. That being said, I do feel the Rife technology was then perfected when it came to the even roll. But Mr. Rife himself that partnered up five years ago, took all his many years of building putters with Rife to then create the even roll. And with the quality materials they're using in the even roll, as well as the mill designs, it makes so much sense that the even roll should go in the great section. If you're looking for an okay putter on a budget, some of these Rife putters look beautiful as well. You can pick them up for 30, 40 pounds. And let's be honest, he knew what he was doing. Up next again, I would say iconic putter, the Odyssey two ball putter. And to match up with it in terms of one of the most iconic putters and one of the most useless putters Odyssey ever brought out, the tribal is straight in the poor section. And this tribal represents every mallet putter that every company brought out that essentially is a shovel on the end of the putter. They're like, look how forgiving this putter is. Yes, you've got a sledgehammer on the end of a stick, but you get zero feel. And I'm sure there's a lot of you that have got the tribal and go, it's the best putter I've ever used. But essentially the two ball was so popular, they just decided, yeah, stick another ball on the end of it and we'll try and sell that. So I'm not having necessarily a go at tribal essentially, but it goes for all those putters that are so ginormous that you get no feedback, no information from that putter phase and essentially making it harder for you to learn what a decent putting stroke is. Let's have a look at some good putters now. For example, the Yes putter. This was my first putter that I ever had. And to be honest, similar category to the Rive. However, Yes in its, in its heyday was so popular as a brand. And again, in 2022, this is such a good putter for you guys that are just looking to spend 30, 40 pounds and get a decent feel, decent feedback. And whilst we're on that matter, Cleveland Huntington Beach putters. These things are brand new at 99 pounds, 89 pounds. Second hand, you're gonna be getting a great putter for the price tag when it comes to Cleveland and yes, putters. Not only that, we've got one that is so under the radar, no one ever talks about or uses and looks unbelievable. These things are so good looking, but don't get any recognition. 
never compromise i'm going to be putting in the goods section and to be honest the whole goods section is mainly down to price in the second hand market in my eyes they're not the world's best putters three four hundred pounds milled scotty cameron's even rolls you name it but for the value of money and the fact that if you're starting this game and you want to just learn to putt well all three of those for me around the 50 pound mark is a great starting point. Let's get into Scotty Cameron Legends because there's so many Scotty Camerons out there. You could essentially just put a lot of them into the great and iconic section. And loads of you will be going, Simon, I've got this Scotty Cameron. Simon, I've got that Scotty Cameron. Let's talk about the real ones. The ones that were in Tiger's hands, for example, we're going to go with the GSS, the German Stainless Steel Scotty Cameron Putter. And a great fact about that little red dot that you see in every Scotty Cameron now with the Newport 2s or whatever it is, is essentially Tiger wanted four grams swing weighting taken out of the head before a tournament. And Scotty Cameron himself had to mill not only out the back, but out the heel of the putter, and to make it look better, made that red paint infill. It's become iconic. Everyone recognizes the red eye in the back of a Scotty Cameron, and that is why I'm putting the GSS, extremely expensive putter. No one watching this video has probably even touched one or seen one in person, but if you've been watching and playing golf for a long time, you know exactly what that symbol means. On the topic of Scotty Camerons, we have to put the Terillium Scotty Cameron up there as well. Again, you're going to be paying six, seven hundred pounds for a very good condition Terillium putter. And that insert itself is supposed to be one of the softest feeling metals when it comes to the putting game. But again, iconic because of the 1997 Masters win that Tiger Woods had. And for me, these two Scotty Camerons separate themselves from all the other Scotties, great as they are, the Phantoms, the Newports, whatever it might be, these two go in the iconic section of all time greatest putters. However, not to say Scotty Cameron hasn't had a few bad putters. And I'm just gonna shove the Golo in there. The Golo putter, I feel, especially when I was a pro, and I'd love to hear you guys, so many of you got a Golo in the bag at the moment, going, I love my Golo putter. Aesthetically, it was chunky, it was messy. It was the first mallet putter, I believe, I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying this, the first mallet putter kind of design Scotty Cameron was playing with, because before they were all sleek blade, toe balance putters, and the Golo came out out and it was just that brash of yellow on the bottom that for me personally the only reason in the poor category is because of aesthetics alone i'd love to hear your guys thoughts and to be honest scotty cameron then brought out many mallet putters the phantoms for example that look stunning beautiful sharp edgy but for me the golo was that cross gap that just didn't do anything Whilst we're on the topic of poor putters, let's just put the Nike concept straight in there. One of my mates, Mark, who watches the channel, absolutely unbelievable with this thing. But again, it was a concept that just didn't really need to be brought out onto the market. And whilst we're looking at different types of putters that I think did change the game for the better, Ping Sigma 2, I'm going to put in the grey mainly because of the adjustable handle in the putter. You can lengthen it, you can shorten it, and it's very easy to do, which I think is just revolutionary really for putting. And especially someone that worked in the shop that could extend or shorten a putter to someone's needs, that was just a go-to, and you didn't need seven different putters on the rack to do that. Whilst we're looking at different innovations, I'm gonna put the arm lock in there as well from Odyssey. Again, because we can't anchor putters anymore, I feel like arm lock is the closest thing to having a different element or a different technique in the game of golf. But there was some great classics, unbelievable classics in the day. And I'm gonna be putting the bullseye in the iconic section. And I'm gonna put the 8802 in the great section. The bullseye basically influencing every mini golf putter in the world, as well as the 8802 having so many championships under its belt. You wouldn't think of Wilson Staff when it comes to putters. I luckily got to able to play with the 8802 um, recently. I bought it as Wilson Staff brought out a celebration putter. And again, those two putters, not necessarily the most forgiving, not necessarily the most technologically advanced, but iconic in both their own rights. And to be honest, if you want a putter to give you a hundred percent feedback i.e you need to know if your putting stroke is good both of those putters deserve to be in their spots now the next two again very similar to the ping sigma and the arm lock odyssey putter i haven't been able to try the sik the sick putter or the Seymour, no, I tried the Seymour. I haven't been able to try the SIK Sick Putter, but both of these, again, 
very unusual in their design. The SIG putter, famously used by Bryson at the moment, and stands for Science in Kinematics, as well as the Seymour having that red dot under the hosel of the putter, are both putters that are designed to try and give you the best technique. The SIK putter, the SIG putter is designed to have that variable de-lofting face, so if you push your hands forward, it's gonna still create the right loft at impact, giving you good roll, and the Seymour giving you good fundamentals, i.e. you need that shaft to cover the red dot on the hosel and therefore giving you the appropriate loft at impact as well. And then lastly, I'm gonna put controversially this one in the iconic section, the tailor-made spider putter. The amount of tournaments this putter has won is breathtaking. And yes, you could just say because the players have been paid to put it in their hands, but I've had a spider in the bag. Many of you had spiders in the bag. And the fact that the second hand price of any spider putter is still around hundred pounds, goes to show how popular the brand, the style, and the forgiveness of this putter actually is for the everyday golfer. Guys, if you like this video, you might like this one up here on the left-hand side. Catch you guys there.